Uh, while I would not like to comment on Al Dafra because I have limited insights, I can only say that uh, the times are tough and these projects of this magnitude and at the timing at which they were signed, there is for sure a lot of challenges before the developer, before the EPC and during these times uh, a lot of collaborative, innovative thinking is required. How do you come forward and see that all your partners, uh, they are well supported and you, you come up with some innovations by which their pain can be mitigated. Uh, we are also building a similar size project, uh, not in UAE but uh, in Saudi Arabia and the challenges are pretty similar. But you know in spite of all these challenges, uh, what can be said with firm surety that Everyone is working to honor the commitments in the contract, whatever are the uh, COD timelines, they need to be fully uh, protected. And inshallah, for my, my friend EDF and for us, this shall be done. Mr. Mustafa, would you have any thoughts on this? I could see you smiling, so definitely there are something. <laughs> you have a specific question for, uh, for yeah. me? The same question uh, is extended to you regarding, you know, Al Dafra PV project uh, that is coming up. The next new project in UAE, which is going to be the one of the biggest project and a benchmark project for UAE. Uh, I wanted to have uh, your thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, definitely. I think it's uh, it's in the in the, in the right in the right track to 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 keep this you know the, this uh, this momentum and to, to not really really delay you know uh, in any project because uh, uh, as you mentioned uh, from the beginning we have the the COP in Egypt and the this, the, the next one it will be in UAE and uh, I, I, uh, I I I believe that we will announce you know new projects and new targets so that is for sure and uh, even I think uh, uh, for for Dubai, I think uh, it's, it's leading now, but uh, Abu Dhabi also it, uh, is, uh, is uh, going forward. But the, the problem is, uh, uh, from my point of view, is uh, how to uh, engage other uh, Emirates, because you are focusing only on Dubai and Abu Dhabi. That uh, I think it, uh, it's very important also to to embark uh, the others, Aras Al Khaim, Fujair, and others, and uh, with the, with the same uh, with the same you know uh, policy, with the same strategy, with the same business model, because for the utility. But on the other side, I think uh, uh, the market of distributed on the rooftop uh, will uh, play also a key role because we cannot really focus only on the uh, utility scale. From my point of view, if we have to uh, create jobs, if we have to create SMEs, uh, we have to also uh, uh, engage on the, on the solar uh, rooftop and distributed market. Uh, otherwise, it will be very difficult, you know, to uh, engage uh, SMEs, as you know, for the utility scale, is the, the big players who were dominating, you know, the, the, these markets. And uh, for the distributor thinking for integrating uh, in the buildings, that is, I think, the, 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 the difference between the business model. They are quite different between the utility and distributed. We cannot compare them. And uh, we have different players. We have different policy and regulations. So that is, I think, uh, very important to uh, tackle the, the issue of uh, uh, electricity tariff. That is, I think, uh, in Dubai, uh, the, the Rusur rooftop uh, uh, market is uh, going well. Okay, N not really, really well, well, but uh, uh, in comparison, for example, for Abu Dhabi, where they have very low electricity tariff, so the introduction of rooftop is very difficult and uh, very tough. You know, to, uh, uh, how do you have to convince, for example, a, a customer uh, to uh, to go with a solar tariff when he has the possibility to, to have the electricity with, uh, you know, with paying nothing. So uh, that is, I think, and the, the problem of expat and uh, the, 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 also the citizens, UAE citizens. Because for expat, for example, uh, I, I'm not sure it will be interested, you know, to, to install a, a, a solar rooftop in, 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 in the building because uh, even, I, I don't know if he will stay or not. So that is, I think, we have also to uh, tackle those, uh, those uh, specific uh, Issues on the villas. I think it's uh, it's very important to have you know those uh, solar rooftop. 
but uh, definitely you know the, the subsidy of uh, the electricity in some uh, emirates they are impeding you know the introduction of this uh, you know uh, uh, solar rooftop systems thank you mr mustafa i think you have touched upon a very important point uh, that why the bus has stopped only till dubai and abu dhabi and i would ask mr ashok that why not other emirates are you know taking up this low hanging fruit of rooftop solar okay i mean utility might take a while or maybe you know they have different plans but you know what's happening with the rooftop and uh, on site solar yeah i think it's an important topic because obviously you know that dubai has progressed abu dhabi is starting to get there but the other emirates we have been interacting also at the policy level we are not really sure what's the bottleneck because the initiative started the same time as dubai but it has not uh, really taken a shape yet so we still feel that the grid operator and the players they have not yet reached an understanding of the benefits which can come from say a distributed generation policy getting in place so if the utility feels the smaller ipp or the developers are a competition that could be a challenge so here probably they love to look at that this is to a common goal mm -hmm. and who all can contribute to that you know to get this policy in place agreed and although we understand that you know uh, people or the experts who have been in dubai and abu dhabi they have moved to these places but still the policies are not uh, yet implemented at least at least at the level at what abu, uh, dubai and abu dhabi is uh, so you know will not take a lot of time but i have you know two important questions or you know for a discussion for everyone now not you know pointing anyone uh, specifically and i would again invite anything from the audience if you have anything which you want to have a discussion on you know we have experts who can resolve uh, these these questions so now a uh, very important point which uh, anand also mentioned in the introduction is uh, green hydrogen i think uh, uh, that's a reality or a myth we don't know yet we have seen in smaller scales yes it is it is there it is possible uh but i would like to understand from all the panelists you know distributed utility you know definitely there is a buzz for green hydrogen is it is it a reality that we see you know happening at least on a utility scale first let's say and then coming to distributed maybe in let's say by 2030 uh do you do you see a possibility yes uh Well, so 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 we know how to produce green hydrogen uh, for for a long time. Uh, so uh, there there is no uh, technical uh, barrier here. Uh, it's a question of of cost first of all, and why we are seeing now this trend uh, ongoing. It's because um, the key point to decrease the price of green hydrogen is the it's not the capacity factor. It's actually the price of electricity. So because renewable now are able to produce very cheap. Uh, electricity that's why you have uh, green hydrogen uh, coming uh, again uh, in the game now there's the question of the transportation and that's where uh, maybe uh, you know um, uh, here uh, companies and my colleagues they may uh, know better uh, but clearly the market is wondering uh, where to go uh, you know pipeline yes no uh, can we do it i mean apparently uh, it's it's possible uh but then for uh the 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 because we're going to produce um green hydrogen in places where you have high capacity factor of wind solar plus the lowest cost of electricity uh then you have the issue of transportation from one country to another so now what is the 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 uh the medium actually that we're going to use is it uh, uh ammonia is it uh, liquid hydrogen etc Uh, frankly I, i'm wondering uh, what's going to be uh, because the losses uh, in the in the in the chain are, are very big and plus the infrastructure required are are also uh, important uh, you ask whether green hydrogen is reality or not but let me take you back in 2011 12 if you ask the same question whether solar is reality people would have thought okay the prices are so high we don't know it's a fad it will pass away i believe the same thing is happening with hydrogen as on date as we progress 
it will gain significant momentum, the prices will start coming down, there will be efficiency, construction cost will come, come down, electricity prices, as I keep on saying, in short term, there might be hiccups, in long run, new technologies are coming, efficiency levels are going up, tariff will keep on coming down, so green hydrogen is going to stay here. But yes, as with any new technology, there are constraints reg uh, regarding how it will be transported, whether it will be ammonia or liquid hydrogen, that is yet to be seen. But I believe human being is smart enough, they will figure something out. <clears throat> yes, for, I mean, I agree with both of you on, uh, on Green H2. Um, I mean, deploying solar large scale and renewable as a whole, uh, have this problem of intermittency. We need storage. Uh, so storage, there's uh, lithium, uh, lithium ion batteries or those are type of storage and, and H2 as well is one of the solution. Uh, definitely, uh, like you just mentioned, yeah, it's a start. We're expecting a reduce of cost with R&D, uh, scaling, scaling reduction and so on. Uh, so, it's very promising for this decade to see how the, the trend of the cost will go. Uh, there's a lot of players that uh, make big announcements uh, those last months. Uh, pilot project, MOU, uh, MOU uh, sign everywhere. So, I mean, a lot of players are looking very deeply into it. And, um, and yeah, after I think, like Solar uh, did, uh, you know, to have the consumer, to have the right regulation, it will come into place, but it will take time. And, uh, and this will go, uh, I mean, the, the cost of it will define how, how quick it will go, I believe. And uh, as Gary mentioned, yeah, usually Green H2 is like a 60 or 70% of Green H2 comes from the price of renewable. So now it's, become, uh, it's becoming very um, in interesting. So let's see, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it in 2030 to see uh, <laughs> how, how the pace was, but uh, very promising, yes. Can't really claim expertise here, but my two bits worth. I think the solar component part is already in place. The storage parts are getting addressed. So maybe looking at the hydrogen and the kind of announcements being made, I have a feeling that you know it could get accelerated and soon become a reality. Okay, hydrogen is going to stay and uh, from the media news I'm sure many of you must have already heard that the work on one of the largest hydrogen plant in this region has already kick-started. It's uh, being developed by Aqua Power in a city called Neom in Saudi Arabia. And uh, there are a lot of developments happening uh, in few other countries also. So as far as hydrogen generation is concerned, this region is blessed region in terms of the cheapest prices of the green energy, which is the majority cost involved in the green hydrogen. So as far as my knowledge about this sector is concerned, although I'm not directly associated, uh, hydrogen is going to be the new oil for Middle East. And in the form of ammonia, it can be transported anywhere, uh, be it Asia, be it Europe, Japan. Hydrogen in the form of transporting in the form of hydrogen will take some time because the technologies are still very costly. So hydrogen is going to stay and is going to be a hugely booming sector in Middle East. So is, is green hydrogen a, a reality? Uh, I think uh, green hydrogen uh, should be a must. Uh, I mean, whatever technology uh, is coming to help us to, to reduce the uh, CO2 food footprint in the world is, is welcome. Uh, the colleague just mentioned uh, the, the great project, the aqua project, the uh, aqua power is developing in Neon City. So I think we have to use all the resources, not, not only solar, wind, CSP as well, uh, but also hydrogen uh, to reduce the CO2 food, uh, footprint. I agree with uh, uh, our colleague as well. Question mark here is the, the logistic. So, but uh, I think uh, we are in a position to, to solve this, uh, this, this question mark. Uh, he said before, ammonia, liquid. Uh, there are some different uh, ways to, to, 
transport uh, hydrogen, and it's clear how, how to produce hydrogen from, from a green source. Uh, I would like to mention here also that the uh, EDF uh, industrial uh, uh, international part is, is developing a pink hydrogen, which is coming from, from nuclear uh, projects. So to me, hydrogen is a reality and it's a must. Yeah, thank you. Uh, regarding uh, green hydrogen, I think uh, I have the three, three points. Uh, I agree with uh, Karim when he mentioned uh, the cost is still high. Uh, but from... Uh, from the, the source, from the solar energy, for example, the, 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 this region is blessed with uh, a huge you know, potential of solar and we have you know, low cost. That is, I think, in favor of uh, producing uh, uh, low cost green hydrogen. But the problem is in the electricity on the, 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 the solar energy or the renewables energy. Because we have to uh, improve the efficiency of electrolyzers and you know, to uh, um, have you know a scalable market that is the problem that uh, we faced with renewables uh, at the beginning your high cost uh, the, the market was very 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 small so with the time I think uh, 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 when the, the market will grow the, re the electrolyzers uh, cost will will be re reduced that is for sure Plus, you have you know, the, the, the research and development, they are going also with uh, some uh, uh, good options. I think in, in, in five or uh, uh, less than 10 years, we will have you know, a very efficient electrolyzers. The second one is, I think, a green hydrogen will improve the market of solar and will add capacity to solar. And it is a very important uh, point because without uh, you know, solar, without renewables, we cannot have the green hydrogen. That is, uh, you know, uh, obvious. But for the developers, for solar developers and for solar market, that uh, uh, will 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 have, you know, a booming. If we have, you know, a, a very scalable green uh, hydrogen market, the solar uh, industry will will gain a lot from 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 this uh, point of view. Plus, you know, the flexibility of the of the of the energy system. I think hydrogen can uh, uh, also uh, play a major role in storing the excess of electricity coming from renewables and um, this electricity cannot you know use it and uh, it will be lost so then we can introduce you know the the the, uh, the, the, the process of uh, uh, having high green hydrogen with this excess of electricity and the cost of uh, renewables of the solar uh, can be uh, reduced and the flexibility of the grid will be improved. The third one is now we are uh, witnessing a kind of uh, a movement in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the green hydrogen you know, uh, uh, landscape. Uh, for example, in the UAE, we, 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 we heard that a lot of partnerships uh, are going on with uh, you know, uh, uh, Mubadala, with Adnoc, with Taka, all those big players, they are now launching a very uh, serious and very, a very strong you know, uh, strategy on, uh, on, on green hydrogen. You have Saudi Arabia, they are building you know, a big city, Neom, uh, with all the facilities, with all the logistics for producing green hydrogen. Neom is uh, you know, uh, the same size of, of uh, Belgium. <laughs> so, so imagine, you know, this. Uh, this uh, I think th this, is the, this is the future. Uh, we cannot avoid, you know, to, to think about those uh, holistic, you know, framework that integrating all the technology uh, uh, hubs because we cannot, as I said, we cannot rely, you know, on other uh, developers or producers to produce green hydrogen locally. So that is, I think, very important and it will play in favor of local manufacturing. The third, uh, uh, I think Oman also, they are also going uh, forward with uh, this green uh, hydrogen agenda and they are looking for a uh, market in, in, in Asia. For example, in the UAE and, and, and Saudi, they were approached by uh, the EU. Uh, the EU, they are looking for importing the, you know, uh, green hydrogen. I think this is, uh, I think one of the elements of this movement is, you know, to export the green hydrogen that would be in favor of reducing the, the, the cost. Yes. Thank you. 
Thank you. With regards to green hydrogen, technology improvements are still required more and more uh, because it is at the very nascent stage right now. Things are moving uh, pretty uh, slow because of the current market situation. So once it uh, like uh, triggers the activity on green hydrogen, more and more new technology will arise like how it happened in solar. Oh, hard with, with at one time there was a 100 watt, watt peak module now there are more than 600 watt peak module which has be, uh, like brought down the cost of lcu of solar plant pretty drastically uh, at into from 2011 to 2022 so same thing is going to happen for green hydrogen in future with bigger sizes of electrolyzer coming in picture new technologies Definitely the LCO, LCOH of uh, green hydrogen also will come down and from the Middle East point of view, uh, we are abundant with uh, solar energy. Definitely we have a space, we have uh, uh, the best logistic provider and it will be like an exporting unit for Europe for supporting them with the green hydrogen, what they require as well as for our consumption. So this is the future which I can uh, think about of Middle East with into green hydrogen. And since we have started with the big projects coming in, definitely by 2030 or I think before that, we can see a good uh, improvement on green hydrogen technologies uh, in the Middle East, especially with UAE and Saudi going very aggressive in this region. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I think, yes, this is the way to go. We still have to see and, you know, it's going to happen, definitely for sure. So just one last question just for the, you know, audience and, you know, we can take 30 seconds each to uh, answer that. It's a very simple one. What we also understand, you know, starting from 2019, we had COVID, which stayed for 2021. We saw everything happening on Zoom and MS Teams. Now we came to 2022 and Ukraine, Russia crisis happened and again it's, uh, you know, volatile. So what, what we understand and what mar market experts says or the financial guru says that this is the time that it's the great reset which is happening. Uh, so just in, you know, quick 30 seconds, uh, if you can, you know, let your thought <clears throat> know to the audience that is it, is it the time that, you know, everyone straighten up and you know be ready for what's going to come till 2030 and is this the great reset that where you you know set your priorities and you know uh, target straight well uh, well I, I would love to say it's a it's a great reset uh, but um, in 2021 um, the uh, co2 emissions there they've been uh, uh, as high as ever and uh, economic growth uh, restarted, but also emissions and our energy demand. And if we want to follow a 1.5 degree scenario, actually our energy demand globally should decrease. And it has increased, so it's, it's really bad. It's not even uh, being on the right trajectory. It's like, um, like not making enough, it's, it's the opposite. So, um, so we should be very careful. It depends on the regulatory framework, actually. So what we see is that um, uh, more and more countries, uh, they actually commit uh, to net zero. Uh, they are producing scenarios and they are of enforcing these scenarios into law. Um, so we are covering more and more emissions through that. Um, so renewable energy is going strong. So on the electrical part, we have, um, let's say, a positive um, outlook. Uh, but it's not enough. Uh, today, electricity is only 20% uh, of our energy demand, and it should go to 50%. So what I believe is that um, uh, the governments, they still don't have these numbers in mind. We are struggling to, you know, we are battling against the utility to do one gigawatt or a few gigawatts here and there, and to accelerate. But actually, the electrical part should double so it's double, the, the, our efforts should be way above what we're doing. So as long as we uh, hopefully uh, will get to the right uh, uh, mindset and numbers uh, soon. Well, 